Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, I'm going to be reviewing the IDAS NBX Nebula Booster Filter. Now this is the built-in filter drawer version, specifically designed for the RASA 8 filter drawer that IDAS makes, so I'm going to be testing this out today. And what's really neat about this filter, so it's a 10 nanometer hydrogen alpha and 10 nanometer oxygen 3 filter, but what's cool is the bands are pre-shifted, so it's designed for high speed. So in my quest to find a really good dual band high speed filter. This is next up in my testing and uh, I think you're going to like the results. Now I wanted to start this review off a bit differently today by showing you my first light with this filter. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so for my first light with the IDAS NBX, I'm going to go over to IC1848. So here we go. All right, so it is way too windy out here for auto guiding. So I'm just taking a 120 second unguided exposure and we'll see how it turns out here. Here we go. First light with the IDAS NBX. Oh yeah. That's nice. That's only two minutes, and that's picking up the reds very nicely. As you can tell, I'm pretty excited. Uh, that two-minute exposure really pulled out a lot of data, so that was really exciting. I have not had a filter do that before at F2. So I went and then shot a 300-second or five-minute exposure, and that was just really popping as well. So I'm going to test this filter over the next few weeks. I'm going to shoot lots of different targets with it and just compile all my results, but for now, this is looking pretty good. Now, as a matter of disclosure, I did want to say that I reached out to IDAS and asked them if I could test this filter. Now, you know this channel. I give honest reviews all the time. I never, you know, sugarcoat anything. So uh, you can still expect that today. And there are no strings attached with this. So if I find something I don't like, I'm free to say it. If I find something I like, I'm free to say it. So this is a genuine review. I just want to disclose that I did get this from IDAS for the purpose of testing. Now I'd like to discuss for a minute what makes a filter good in my opinion. Now if you're using a color camera and trying to take a color image in one night, really it's what you see in the individual exposures that shows whether a filter is quality to me or not. So for example, if I take an image and my individual exposures pull in a lot of color, then I know that this filter is transmitting the desired wavelengths through my cam or through the filter into my camera that I'm looking for, then I know this is a good filter. If it's not, then maybe the bands are shifting or it may not be such a good filter for my system. So really, to me, what makes a good filter is if you see immediate results in the individual exposures. Now on the monochrome side of things, that can be um, a little bit different because you're not taking a color image. So what you're gonna be looking for in a good monochrome filter is how much detail you're pulling in through that filter. If you see a lot of detail coming in, then obviously the bands you're after are being transmitted through. Now an important secondary consideration when you're looking at the quality of a filter is do you see any artifacts when you're using the filter? So do you see any weird vertical or horizontal banding? Do the images look a little bit soft? So maybe out of focus a little bit when you use the filter? Do you see any halos around the stars? Things like that. So weird artifacts is really my second consideration when I look at the quality of a filter. So those really are my two metrics. Number one, does the filter actually transmit what you want at a high percentage? So when you take those individual exposures in a color camera, are you seeing the color being transmitted? Or in a monochrome filter, are you seeing that detail associated with the wavelength you want, like O3, S2, H-alpha? And then number two, does the filter produce artifacts? So I guess you could say those are my two main metrics when I look at the quality of a filter. So what I'm going to do now is take the IDAS NBX and look at each of those metrics and evaluate its performance. All right, so here comes the exciting part. I want to show you the transmission results of the IDAS NBX, specifically the transmission versus wavelength graph. Now, this filter was designed for high speed use or for telescope systems that have really steep light cones, in other words, and it does not disappoint. In the hydrogen alpha wavelength, you can see on the Celestron RASA 8, it transmits 90% of the hydrogen alpha light, and that is very obvious in my images. It's really popping. It's coming through very, very well. Uh, the oxygen 3 
It's basically the same thing, but a little better. 95% of the oxygen three light is coming through at F2 in the Celestron Rasset 8. So both of those wavelengths in my images are really popping. I'm gonna show you some results later that shows that. Um, but man, this thing is sweet. Very excited about this, that people now have a really good option that use color cameras that have a high speed system. They have a good filter that they can go with. All right, so let's talk about image defects with the IDAS MBX. Have I seen any artifacts in my images? Nope, none at all. And that's all I have to say. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about the bandwidth in this filter as well. So both the hydrogen alpha line and the oxygen three line have a 10 nanometer band pass at the full width half maximum. What that means is if you look at the actual curve of the hydrogen alpha line or the oxygen three line, halfway up, the band passes are 10 nanometers wide. So that's actually the perfect area for me. So they're not narrow enough, like three nanometers or four nanometers that you have to expose forever, but they're also not wide enough that they let in more light pollution. So 10 nanometers for me in my situation is just about perfect actually. Even with the full moon, I can still image, the bands are narrow enough that I can still image at the full moon. Now, you don't wanna image right next to the full moon, you'll, you'll get a massive gradient, but if you're far away, you'll still get really, really good results. The other really nice thing about those 10 nanometer band passes, cameras that have really small pixel sizes, like the ZW183MC Pro right here, those typically you have to expose a lot longer to pull in the light because smaller pixel sizes basically is equivalent to longer exposure times. With the 10 nanometer bands at F2, you still pull in that light really quickly. So one, two minute, three minute exposures, you're still pulling in lots of color. Now, if you have a bigger camera like the 294MC Pro or with the bigger pixel sizes, that's gonna be even shorter image duration. So this filter really is a treat to image with. Now this is the integrated RASA filter drawer version of the filter. They do make a two inch or 48 millimeter option. So if you have a filter vault or a filter drawer, filter wheel, and you need a two inch version, I just wanted to let you know they do make it in that size as well. So I'm sure this is what you've been waiting for. So let's go ahead and look at the actual data I've obtained using the IDAS NVX and my Celestron RASA 8. So right now I'm imaging the Cygnus wall in the North American Nebula, taking five minute exposures with the IDAS NVX, and I want you to see this sub come right out of the ASI Air Pro. It is amazing. All right, so here it goes. It's loading up now. <laughs> oh man. That is beautiful. That almost comes out of the camera so good in one exposure that it looks like a stacked picture. So once I get a bunch of these and stack them all up, this should look really, really nice. Now you know I gauge the quality of the filter based on the initial exposure. So I'm gonna show you those as well as my processed images so you can judge for yourself. Now if you've watched this channel for a long time, you know the Veil Nebula region is one of my favorite areas of the sky. So I'm gonna show you some various subs of that region. But not only that, it makes for a very great test of an oxygen 3 and H alpha filter because it's very intense in the hydrogen alpha wavelength and it's also very intense region in the oxygen 3. So you're really getting both of those bands transmitted when you look at the veil. So it's a perfect test for this filter. So that's where we're gonna start. All right, so here is an image of the Western Veil Nebula, an individual exposure of five minutes. Now, a lot of people think it's unreasonable to take a five minute exposure on an F2 system. I say, why not? Pull in as much as I can. And now the 183 MC Pro has those small pixel sizes, so I do need to expose a little longer. But you can see from this individual exposure, a lot of light coming through, you're getting a lot of that H alpha and O3, and it looks pretty good. Now I'm sure you wanna see the processed image, so here it is. I don't do a lot of processing, as you know. I don't know if it's the, the scientist in me or what, but I just don't love changing my images all that much. So I just adjust the curve slightly and denoise here, and you can see it looks pretty good. This is a beautiful shot of the witch's broom. I think this nebula is just gorgeous. So uh, yeah, really good results here from the NBX. Moving on, here's the Eastern Veil Nebula. This I decided to lower the exposure to show the difference. So this is three minute exposures. So 180 seconds, but you can still see H alpha and O3 are being transmitted through that filter very efficiently. So still pulling in a lot of that color. The processed image to me, Oh, I just love this region of the sky. It's just so beautiful. Another great test for the NBX is Planetary Nebula. Planetary Nebula 
are very prominent in the oxygen three and in the hydrogen alpha wavelengths. So I thought I'd shoot one. So here's the dumbbell nebula. These are 30 second exposures. That's it. That's all I feel like I needed to do. So 30 seconds, oxygen three obviously pop in, H alpha pop in and processing again, very, very easy. Now here's an image of the Cygnus wall in the North America nebula. Now I really like this nebula a lot. I've imaged it a couple times this year already, but none were as easy as when I used the NBX. So this is a five minute individual exposure and you can really see that hydrogen alpha data is just popping, just coming out. So when I went to process this data, it was so easy because there was so much data there already, I just barely adjusted the curves and I denoised it and that's it. So in addition to transmitting all that light, it also makes post-processing very easy because you already have so much data there. All right, well last but not least, this is NGC 6888, the Crescent Nebula. And this is an individual three minute exposure. And again, just like the other examples, you can see the hydrogen alpha data is being transmitted really nicely through there. And the image itself is pretty decent. Now the processing on this was actually very easy as well, just because a lot of that data is already present. So I do have a couple other images to show you, like the lobster claw and that sort of thing, but this video is getting a little bit long, so if you'd like, you can check out my Instagram account, at AstroBlender, where I have posted those. So just to summarize real quick, I think this filter is awesome to have a filter that is designed specifically for high-speed systems and actually work. 10 nanometer band passes, just about perfect. Not too narrow, not too wide, and really it just makes astrophotography easy on this system. I can get an image in one night, no problem and have it look actually pretty good. Also, if you're a DSLR user and you use fast lenses, you could do some high speed imaging of the Milky Way and really pull in that HA and O3 data and maybe add it to your broadband data. So the possibilities for this thing are quite high. I think it's phenomenal and I've found my go-to filter for my F2 system. All right, everyone. Well, that is my review of the IDAS NBX Nebula Booster filter. I have finally found a filter that works really well in fast optical systems. So F2, this thing works amazing in my RASA. So this is what I'm going with from now on. So if you're a one-shot color camera user like me and you produce an image in one night, this is a phenomenal dual narrow band hydrogen alpha oxygen three filter. So as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and clear skies.